I can't tell you how many people I talk to. They have a couple million dollars saved for retirement. They got more money than they're probably ever going to spend, but they keep working because they're worried, well, what do I do about my health care, right? If I don't, if I'm not working, I don't have health care through my company. And so they just keep working as though they can't go out and buy health care, you know, directly. I mean, right. they can easily afford it, yet it's a very common concern. You're listening to Retirement Today. I'm your co-host, Zach Holcomb, and alongside me, we have Michael Reese. He's a certified financial planning professional, and he spent the last 25-plus years helping families get into and through retirement. Retirement, that's what our show is all about, and we've got a great topic today, Mike. We're going to talk about the three fears, the three big fears that people have around retirement. Yeah, that's right, Zach. So three things that people are scared about when it comes to their retirement. And these are natural fears, by the way. If you don't have these fears, uh, you might be a little unusual. I would even go that far. But uh, before we jump into that, hey, it's a new year, right, Zach? Yeah, I'm super pumped to be back. It's 2022. We're getting ready for the new year in front of us. Uh, for a lot of people, I saw uh, something like record numbers of people are retiring, four and a half million uh, in a month. Right? It's Just, a crazy number to even believe. Yeah, the great resignation, they call it. And as everyone's looking to retire, and as you're listening, you might not be ready to retire yet, of course. But I thought to myself, let's talk about the three fears. These are three concerns, worries, fears that I see every day when I talk to people who are trying to plan for that you know, that retirement of their dreams. Right. And it's the same from, from my perspective. These are common things that we hear quite often. Yeah. Over and over again. The three things that we're going to talk about, these are the three fears that we're going to hit on today. Okay. People, when they're getting ready to retire, in the back of their mind, whether they admit it or not, they're worried and they're, they're always asking the question, will my money last? Right. Because if you think about it, here you are, you've been saving money all these years. When you retire, that pot of money that you've built up, that's it. There's nothing else. Right. So we're going to talk about income planning, and that's how you kind of address that concern. Right. Making that money last. Right. So that's fear number one. Okay. Fear number two. Oh, healthcare. Oh, that's a big one. I can't tell you how many people I talk to. They have a couple million dollars saved for retirement. They got more money than they're probably ever going to spend, but they keep working because they're worried, well, what do I do about my health care, right? If, I don't, if I'm not working, I don't have health care through my company. And so they just keep working as though they can't go out and buy health care you know, directly. I mean, right. they can easily afford it, yet it's a very common concern. And it's a very rational concern. I mean, these fears, by the way, it's not like, oh my gosh, you have these fears, you're an idiot. Yeah. It's or not something's wrong with you. Yeah. yeah no. no. No, this is normal stuff. Normal. If you have these fears, you are normal. You are not crazy. Yeah. You're the average retiree. You're the average person, yeah. right? What if I get sick? What if I get disabled? We always hear about these horror stories where people get this weird disease and they're spending thousands of dollars a month on just their medicine, their prescriptions. Right. What if that's you, right? Common concern. And then the third thing that we're going to talk about, the third fear that we're going to hit on tonight, we want to talk a little bit about the fear of increased taxation down mm. the road. You know, a lot of people, uh, Zach, as you know, They've got a bunch of money saved, and maybe you're like a lot of folks. You have a bunch of your retirement savings in your 401k or your IRA. This is money that's never been taxed. And if the government decides they're going to increase tax rates, which, of course, they're seems like they're always talking about, maybe not doing as quickly as they think they will, but they talk about it. <laughs> right. They love to talk about it. Yeah, and they'd love to do something about it. Um, but, you know, Washington, D.C. is a bit dysfunctional, right. to put it nicely. The point is that if taxes increase down the road, which it's really likely they will do, then that's essentially that is a permanent 
loss in your retirement portfolios. You know, when tax rates go up, the IRS's share of your money increases, your share decreases. So people are, they have a fear of that. Like, hey, what if that happens? How will that affect my financial security? Right. So those are the big three that we're going to talk about this evening. Yeah, you actually had, Zach, uh, a person you talked to. I want you to share this story where you talked to a person on the phone. They had called in and they wanted to talk to somebody, right? In fact, they're you're scheduling them to, to talk to an advisor. Right. And they had expressed, I think you were telling me, that they had expressed a concern of they had saved something like 800000 but this was a big worry of theirs. Yeah, so I talked to this gentleman, and he's done a great job saving. He's worked hard for 30, 40 years, and he has around $800,000, but he's paralyzed in fear that if he steps away from his you know, reliable paycheck that he's getting twice a month, that he's just going to run out of money. And he just has this mentality that there's nothing he can do. He's like, I just have to keep working, even though he really doesn't want to anymore. Yeah, so here we have a situation. We see this a lot, yeah. right? And I'm glad you you shared that, Zach, because this is something we see a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see people, they're working, they've been saving money, but here's the big issue. What's my number is the right. question. Like, they have no idea, none, how much they need to save, you know, how much they need to have in their accounts where it's enough, where right. they can step away. Right. Right. And so yeah, I remember a few years ago, it, maybe now it's 10 years ago, but there was a company at the time, ING, mm-hmm. which is now Voya. And I mm-hmm. think they changed names like 10 years ago now. Yeah. So it probably wasn't a few years ago. It was probably 10 years ago. But they would have these commercials where people would be walking down the street and these big orange bubbles yeah. were above their heads. The numbers. Yeah. yeah. What's your number, right? Yeah. What's your retirement number was the whole campaign. Right. And the, and the idea was that it's not this, it's different for everyone. Your the amount of money you need to save for your retirement is different from everybody else because your situation is different. But how do you know what that number is? This is related. This question is related to the fear of will my money last? How do I know when I've had enough? In this example, this gentleman you talked to, very common situation, by the way, he wants to retire, but he's scared. He's like, if I quit today. I only have this 800,000. It's got to last my lifetime. How do I know if it's enough? Yeah. What do I do? Here's what happens. By the way, I had this come up the other day. So Zach, uh, I was talking to a very nice couple. Let's call them John and Mary, not their real names, of course, but you know, got to call them something. Names change to protect the innocent. Yes. So they're on a zoom call and, uh, we're talking And one of the interesting things they said, they said something that we hear all the time. They said, I said, well, do you have a financial advisor? They said, yeah, we have one. Well, what do, what does that person say about, you know, about your retirement planning? And here's what they said. They said, yeah, every time we talk to him, great guy, but every time we talk to him, he just says, look, stop worrying about it. You got enough money. You got nothing to worry about. And it's it's almost like he's, he treats them like, I don't want to say it this way. Um, I was going to say like children, but it's not, not quite like that, but it's, they're basically saying it's not, he says we'll be okay, but he doesn't tell us how we'll be okay or or, why or what's the reasoning behind it. And I said, well, and I asked him, I said, well, retirement's all about, you know, having a, a, an income plan, you know, a written, retirement income plan that maps out how you're going to get money for the rest of your life. Sure. So when he shows you that plan, you know, what, what does that look like? Like, what have you guys discussed there? What does that plan look like? What do you think they said to me, Zach? Well, we've never discussed anything about an income plan. Yeah, we don't, I've never seen an income plan, a written income plan. Well, what is, and so I said, okay, well, what is, when you talk, I mean, I'm sure you guys are getting ready to retire. Mm -hmm. Obviously you've talked about this because like with our clients, heck, they could be five years away from retirement and we've already put together written income plans for them because, you know, you got to have, if you're going to have a goal of retirement, you need to have a plan to make it a reality. Yeah. You got to replace those paychecks. Yeah. You don't just say, oh, I'm going to retire next week. Maybe I better have a plan. Yeah. Right. I mean, ideally. (laughs) 
So if you've been working with someone for the past 5, 10, 15 years, and they know you're going to retire in the next year or two, then it's kind of their job to come to you and say, hey, John, Mary, Joe, Carol, Bobby, Susie, whatever your names are, hey, you're retiring in the next year or two. We need to start putting together a written retirement plan. I've started to put that together for you, but let's have a conversation about what that needs to look like. Well, this couple, John, did I call them John and Mary? John and Mary. Okay. Yeah. So John and Mary, this had never happened. Right. And in fact, the interesting thing they said to us, I said, so, okay, so what, you know, where do you see us fitting in to all of this? They said, well, the reason we're here, this is where Johnny kind of sat back. I saw him sit back on the Zoom call, right, mm -hmm. in his house. He kind of leaned back in his chair and he said, you know, Mike, this is why we want to talk to you. You see, we listen to you on the radio. You talk about getting a second opinion, right? You talk about getting a second opinion. And you were talking at the time about, you know, different retirement planning concepts. And, you know, Mary and I were looking at each other. We we're like, our advisor never brings this up to us. You know, we have to bring it up to him. And he's done a great job growing our money over time. And he's a really good guy. He goes, but, you know, we're getting close to retirement. And, you know, that's like a different stage of our lives. And we're starting to ask ourselves the question, is it maybe time if we're changing the stage of life and our current advisor is not kind of prepping us for that, we're starting to wonder if maybe it's time to find, you know, it's time to transition maybe. Yeah. Find somebody that's maybe a better fit for our circumstances. Yeah. To a new advisor, someone who specializes in the area, the stage of life where we're looking to enter. Yeah. Which is getting comprehensive retirement planning, not right. just looking at the investments. That's exactly right. Because as you like to say, right, an investment plan is not a, it's not a retirement, retirement plan. plan. Yeah. And so, and, and guess what? That might be you too. You might be sitting there saying, you know, when I talk to my advisor, they're a great person, great guy, great gal, great person. Yet they know you're retiring or want to retire in the not too distant future, or maybe they know you are already retired, but at no point do they come to you and say, Hey, John, Mary, I know you're going to retire in the next year or two, or you want to. It's time for us to really sit down and map this out. Let's create a written retirement income plan where we identify here's where your money's going to come from. Like this is where we're going to pull money. This is a part of your portfolio we're going to take money from in your retirement. This is where, uh, is it going to come from the IRA or the 401k or the Roth or something else? Here's when we're going to pull money out. Here's how much we're going to pull out. Here's when we're going to take social security. Here's why we're going to take it at that time and so on and so on. Let me give you this in a, just kind of a quick preview because this formula, it, it's great. It works in all markets. It works when markets are good. It works when markets are bad. It just works. And it, the greatest part about it is it's easy and it's simple. It's not super complicated. So that the best part about that is you know what your money is supposed to do for you, right? So when you're working, all you're trying to do is trying to, it's growth and accumulation. Just grow, 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 grow. I want my pot of money to get as big as possible. But when you get to retirement, you still want that. You still want your money to grow, of course, because of inflation and all that kind of stuff. But you also need income. And you don't want to take income from a pot of money that's designed to grow, grow, grow. Because when, when you're investing for growth, here's what you know. Some years you're going to make money. And some years, in fact, you're going to make a lot of money. But what happens in other years, Zach? Do you make money every year? I wish you did, but unfortunately you don't. No, some years you're going to lose money. Yeah. And in fact, some years you're going to lose a lot of money. Right. And if you're taking income from a portfolio when it's going up, that's okay. Yeah, that's great. No problem. What happens if you're taking income from a portfolio that's going down in value? Ooh, that's not a good situation. Not okay. That's problem. So the easy retirement formula is simply this. It's a formula, it's proprietary to us, where what we do
what we do is we segregate your portfolio into growth components and income components. The idea with the income components, we're just going to take all of your income from the money we put in the income portion, take all of your income from that until it's gone. But the idea is that buys time for your growth side to just grow, grow, grow without being stressed to take income out of it. So you can have good years and bad years and it doesn't matter. You're okay. And it's a little different for everyone, but it's a simple formula. It works for everyone. And you know what? If you don't have something like that for yourself, maybe it's time for that second opinion, Zach. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about healthcare. So this is one of those areas that I think it's a bit of a fear of the unknown because sure. Zach, I think that um, for many people, and I would even go so far as to say for the vast majority of people, once you understand how the healthcare system works, then that alleviates this fear pretty dramatically. Sure. So let's kind of walk through this. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with Medicare. So once you hit age 65, then you are eligible for Medicare. Medicare, by the way, one of the most awesome programs to be in if you are on the receiving end, meaning you are 65 plus, you have Medicare, you have, and, and if you add on the right supplements, you, it's just like winner, winner, chicken dinner, You're right? It's go. awesome. Yeah. In fact, it may be the best health care you ever have. You have all these, you can have all these different surgeries that cost you almost nothing. It's, sure. it's ridiculous. Now, by the way, from an economic design perspective, let's be honest, Medicare, uh, I've heard it called you know, I've heard Social Security called the biggest Ponzi scheme in the world because uh -huh. it is set up like a Ponzi scheme. Medicare is about three times bigger. Yeah. Medicare, by far, biggest Ponzi scheme in the world. The only reason it's legal is because the government's doing it. If you and I tried to do it, uh, we'd be in jail. Essentially, <laughs> what's, essentially, what happens with a Ponzi scheme is... You know, your older investors, their returns are paid by the new investors, mm -hmm. right? Well, what's Medicare? The people in the system, they're, they're, all their benefits are paid by you and I, the people working today, just like Social Security. Right. But if you're receiving it, it's, it's awesome. Right. I mean, it's awesome. But here's the deal. When you're on Medicare, you're going, the premium that you're going to pay for that insurance is based on your income. If you are a married couple in 2022, you can have something like 180,000 of adjusted gross income or less. Mm -hmm. And it, if I'm a couple thousand dollars off, I'm sorry, but right around there, roughly 180,000. And if you have less than 180K of adjusted gross income, you're gonna pay about, I think it's like $160 a month, 170 bucks a month which is pretty dang cheap. Pretty reasonable. For healthcare. Yeah. If you're single, you got to cut that in half. It's like maybe 90,000, but you're still paying the same right. 160, 170 bucks. Yeah. I know in 2021 it was 148.50, but then they bumped it up and I don't know the exact number for 2022. So anyway, you've got that. That's your base rate. And then you go out and you get a supplement. And you know, some people use this Medicare Advantage program, but mm -hmm. most people just traditional Medicare you get a supplement right. and maybe that's a hundred bucks a month and maybe you get a drug card and that's maybe 20 or 30 bucks a month <clears throat> all in you're paying right around $300 a month for healthcare. Now that's per person, but I'm here to tell you that covers like everything, like pretty much everything. You've got an annual deductible of two, 300 bucks, but I mean, it covers like everything. It's ridiculous. Now, it doesn't cover long-term care and things like that. It also doesn't cover, um, there's some weird diseases out there, maybe weird prescriptions where it doesn't cover. But overwhelmingly, you're pretty much covered. Yeah, generally speaking, you're in the clear. So 300 bucks a month, and what's cool is you can kind of budget for that, right? Not a big deal. For a married couple, maybe 600 a month. Now, if you make more than 180,000 married, more than 90,000 single, and heads up, Roth conversions affect that number. You're, that will increase your premiums. But for the most part, pretty dang good system. Yeah. Now, 
But what if you're 61 years old? Like I saw a study recently and they said, oh, the average age in Americans want to retire is 62. Well, when can you get Medicare again? 65. 65. Like, oh, I'm 62. What do I do between 62 and 65? So we got to bridge the gap here. Yeah. So, well, here's a lot of you know that for most, if you work for a bigger company, if you retire or you leave the company, quit your job, you can maintain your current health care coverage through something called COBRA. That's for 18 months, a year and a half. Basically, you got to pick up the price tag for the health insurance that you have now. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if that's like $700 a month to $1,000 a month. It's like some expensive stuff usually, yeah. right? But it's only for a three year for, for a year and a half. And then at the end of the year and a half, you're like, okay, I'm 63 and a half. I can't get Medicare until I'm 65. I have another, I've got to plug that year and a half gap. What do I do? Simple. You go to healthcare.gov. It's called the marketplace. And on that marketplace, you could shop all these different insurance carriers. You pick and choose. Hey, you know, I could compare them side by side. Here's what it costs. Here's what they provide. You just pick a plan. And guess what? You could probably find a plan pretty darn similar to what you have now at work. And guess what it's going to cost? Pretty darn similar to what your Cobra is going to cost. Right. So it's like this. Here you are. You're 62 years old. It's like this couple I had. Uh, this was before, you know, back in December. They're like, oh, we've got $2 million saved for retirement. And, you know, they got plenty of money. But they don't want to retire because they're worried about health insurance. And I did the math. And I said, what is the most money that health insurance would cost the two of you for the next three years? Mm -hmm. I did the math on that. We calculated that it was pretty much impossible for it to cost more than $50,000 if they spent as much as they could, right? Total, total. I said, what if we're wrong? Let's double it. A hundred. You got $2 million. What if we took a hundred thousand, set it aside to handle your health care expenses for the next three years? And then you've got the other 1.9 million to essentially retire on. Right. And oh, look, using our easy retirement formula, right? We plugged in the numbers and guess what? They had, they still had plenty of money to retire. And so by having that conversation, they kind of looked at each other and said, wow, we didn't even think about it this way. I guess we can retire. We figured out how we're going to handle the healthcare side. But that's always a big concern. By the way, long-term care, I don't have time to go into it today, but that is truly an area you got to watch out for. Yep. Right. And then now what we want to talk about is a third fear, increased taxation. Now, I think there's a lot of rational thought behind that fear, because if you actually look at how our government, you know, their financial uh, maturity level, we could call it, is pretty much non-existent, <laughs> Right. That's you being kind when I'm, you say I that. I know, I'm being nice today. <laughs> I want to call a bunch of politicians weasels or something, but I'll probably get bleeped beep, out. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, if yeah. you just heard a beep, <laughs> I, I might have gotten bleeped out there. Anyway, the point is, these people in Washington, D.C., they, let's put it this way, they're not really good with balancing a budget, right? I love how Warren Buffett said, he said, I can fix the budget overnight. Just create a law that says... Look, if you guys can't keep the budget within a 3% variance level, then you're not eligible for re-election. <laughs> that would fix it pretty fast. Things would change quick. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, we don't get to uh, put that into place. So there is a very real possibility. In fact, there's a high probability that taxes will increase in the future. Right now, in our current tax code, if the politicians do nothing. Ab let, let's just imagine they do absolutely nothing. Politicians are really good at that, aren't they, Zach? Mm -hmm. they, they're really good at flapping their gums. Yeah, saying they're going to do something. But, but actually doing something, they don't really do much. Yeah. If they do nothing in 2026, so we're just starting out here in 2022. So we've got 22, 23, 24, 25. We've got four more years. If they do nothing over the next four years in 2026, taxes are set to automatically increase. When taxes increase, 
that reduces the value of your retirement accounts, like your 401k or your IRA. Now, why is that? It's because whenever you take money out of a 401k or an IRA, this now remember, this money has never been taxed. So every time you pull money out, the IRS is standing there with their hand out saying, hey, give me my, give me my cut, right? I take out you know, $50,000, the IRS says, I want my 20% cut, say, give me 10. Yep. You get 40, IRS gets 20. Well, if taxes go up, their share might go, say, from 20 to 25 or 30. So now you pull out that 50,000 and they say, hey, we want 15, you get to keep 35. So your 40 went down to 35. The value, the real value to you of that account goes down the instant taxes go up. Now, there's an except, an exception there, and that's called the Roth IRA or the Roth 401k. So you probably, if you listen to the radio or you watch TV, you know, financial people for the last several years have been talking about, hey, you got to convert your IRA to a Roth. You got to convert your 401k to a Roth. And the reason they're telling you that is because they're saying, hey, uh, these increases are coming down the road. We know what the tax code is now. You should take advantage of it. It's lower today. It's going to be higher in the future. Pay tax now when the rates are lower and save tax later when the rates are higher. That makes a lot of sense in a lot of situations. Not always, right? right? And that's the thing. You got to be really careful here. Because depending on your situation, what if you're not going to be in a higher tax bracket later on, right? What if you really are not going to be in a higher tax bracket? Now, a lot of people, they're going to be in a higher tax bracket. They don't even realize it right? because of required distributions, right? They're, they're, they're like, you think, oh, I'm going to be in a low tax bracket in retirement. But the minute you hit like 72 and you start taking required distributions, you're like, holy cow, what the heck? And the next thing you know, you get vaulted into high tax brackets because that you weren't expecting because you didn't take that into account. Yep. So you might be thinking, I'm going to be in a low tax bracket. What do I care? Well, guess what? The required distributions, it's like this tax bomb coming your way. Right. You got to pay attention to that. You know, if you've got like 500,000 or more in your 401ks or your IRAs, you need that could be a real problem for you. In fact, that you should be calling us saying, "Hey, I need someone to help us look at help me look at this." Right. But there are other people though, they're higher earners. Let's say that you're working and your spouse is working and between you you're making like 300 grand or something. You're in high tax brackets now. There's a very good possibility when you retire, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. So should you be doing Roth conversions today only to you know pay those high rates today when you're going to be in a lower rate when you retire? Yeah, probably not. Might not be the best time. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything, but it just means might not be the best time to do conversions. Tax planning still matters. Right. Here's the thing, though, that really gets me a little red in the face. You love it when I talk about taxes, don't you? Zach? I know you get so just aggravated and fired <laughs> up. And... <laughs> hate that. Yeah. Hate. I hate those politicians. I hate yeah. giving my. You know, it's like we work so hard for our money, and then we have to turn around and give. All... Look, if I gave portions of my money to the government, and if if the government actually were financially mature, and they actually spent the money I gave them in a reasonably, like reasonably wise yeah. way, right. It wouldn't bother me so yeah, much. It wouldn't be so bad. But we know they waste money left and right. It's just ridiculous. They blow money left and right. And it's just, in fact, I'm I'm fully convinced. I have no proof of this other than what I've seen over my lifetime. Mm-hmm. But I'm fully convinced that some percentage of what's going to Washington, D.C. is finding its way in the pockets of the politicians in D.C. They're, they're making themselves wealthier. I could see it. And they're not spending money the way it should be. And it just makes me angry. I know. Right. <laughs> Here's what breaks my heart and what really kind of gets me a little upset. It's like, you know, there's a couple I met with. Um, again, this is before the year end. You know, call them Bob and Susie. Mm-hmm. Super nice couple. Super nice couple. These people, they plan on living in retirement. 
you know, maybe six, 7,000 a month. They're not living this huge lifestyle. Sure. And we were doing the math and we're evaluating, well, what would taxes look like in your retirement? And in the first couple of years, it'd only be like a couple thousand bucks or less. I mean, hardly anything. Mm -hmm. And like, hey, do we have a tax problem? No, this is actually pretty cool, right? But when we got into their 70s and 80s because of required distributions, that couple thousand a month going to the IRS each year, it's projected to be under the current tax code more like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. instead of a couple thousand a year, twenty, thirty thousand a year. Why? Required distributions. Yep. All because not paying attention. It snuck up on them. And it just I was so thankful that they called in to get a second opinion, as were they, because I was like, holy crap, we never knew that was coming. What can we do about it? Well, we were able to help them fix it, right? We we're able to say, look, you, you do have to pay some tax, maybe pay some more taxes today, but we can avoid a ton of taxes later. And in fact, in their case, we saved them something like uh, over 150000 of tax projected over their lifetime. Sure. But they never would have saved that money if they didn't call, because if you don't call, you don't know you've got a problem. If you don't know you have a problem, nothing happens. Right. Right? So- as we're kind of wrapping up the show tonight, here's the deal. If you're not talking to your advisors every single year, not every few years, every single year about your tax planning, then you could find yourself in a world of hurt because you're not paying attention. I don't want that to happen to you. The best part is it is so easy and it is so free to make sure you're not in that position. I don't want you giving the IRS hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't have to. You shouldn't want to do that either. It's so easy to fix it. All you got to do is call us. You give us a call. The phone number is 512-886-5850. Let's get that second opinion, right? And let's make sure that you're on the right track for your retirement. So as we wrap up the show, Zach, let's get those numbers out there. Hey, you got a call. Let's get that second opinion. Let's make sure you're making the right choices. Mike, we've only got a few spots left available. So call us now, 512-886-5850. Again, that's 512-886-5850. Like Mike said, let's get a second set of eyes on things. Let's give you that second opinion that could change your retirement for the better. And let's help set you up with our easy retirement formula so that you can enjoy the best years, what should be the best years of your life. All right, that's our show this week. See you next week.